this article that the Archbishop wrote yesterday, he even goes so far as to liken the situation in Pakistan to that in Russia at the beginning of the 20th century and Germany in the early 1930s. Do you agree with that comparison, uh, Bishop Nazir Ali? Well, when people uh, spoke to me of the possible Talibanization of Pakistan, I used to laugh at them because I knew that... Uh, the kind of Islam that people practiced in Pakistan was very different. There were political parties. Uh, there was a strong civil society and a reasonably uh, free press that the High Commissioner knows about. But in fact, what has happened uh, is that um, society has been Talibanized in spite of all of these things, in spite um, of a secular-minded government that the High Commissioner represents, uh, I am afraid we have to say that all of this has proved ineffective. Wajid Shamsul Hassan, do you accept that criticism, that despite what you represent, your country has been Talibanized? Well, yes, uh, there is no doubt about it. The, the country has been uh, um, overwhelmed by a group of uh, extremists, and there is no doubt about it. I have no... Uh, um, defense of it and uh, we owe it to the West as a matter of fact they introduced this Taliban ta Talibans and the jihadis in the re region to fight the Soviet Union and ever since then we are reaping the bitter harvest and uh, but again you must uh, remember that uh, we are very resilient people we are determined to fight back like Shabazz Bhatti martyred Shabazz Bhatti he laid down his life he knew four months ago that he will be killed but he's continued his great to service for the interfaith harmony and that is what we need to do now continue his mission continue the mission of late uh, Motrama Shaheed Benazir Bhutto um, right Qadi Azam Muhammad Ali Mijana, who founded Pakistan on liberal and progressive lines who said everybody will have freedom Pakistanis irrespective of their caste creed gender or color My, will be equal let citizens me, let me bring Michael Nazir Ali do, do the Mr. Hazar makes the point that, yes, it's been Talibanized, but they're, they're victims of the policies of the West. Well, I think this is partly true, but uh, I don't think that Pakistan can be excused all responsibility. I think they cooperated in the creation of these militias, and uh, one of the problems at the moment is to control these militias that have been uh, created. They need to be disarmed, they need to be disbanded, but equally, uh, it's, it, uh, we can't just blame uh, the extremists either because there is a systemic issue here. There has been the progressive dismantling of Mr. Jinnah's vision that the High Commissioner is talking about and replacing it with a theocracy. Uh, that is the issue. I mean, I do not believe that uh, a truly Islamic state in the sense of a theocratic state, would protect Christians. I mean, all the examples that we have in Iran and Saudi Arabia and Pakistan and Afghanistan and even Malaysia show that this will not happen. So that's, that's the first problem. The second is that some of this has become systemic in law. So the blasphemy law, uh, I mean, that's one obvious example of how people are being victimized. But there are other laws, the Hudud laws that oppress women, the restriction of women from the public place, uh, the lack of justice for non-Muslims and other groups such as women. Right. I mean, this is not just the work of extremists, but of uh, a systemic um, approach well, to Islamization. Well, let's take that one law, the blasphemy law, Wajid Shamsul Hassan, because that has gone to the heart of the... There have been two assassinations this year as a result of, of people saying that law needs to be changed. Would you say, do you agree that law needs well, to be changed? I tell you, I tell you, that law was not made by this government. That law sure, but does this government this need government. to change it? Does the government the need government, to... The government uh, uh, definitely has proved its good intentions by not executing anybody who had been convicted under the law. But does it need to change the law? And, you know, again, you need in a parliamentary system, in democracy, you need a certain majority to change the law. We don't have that at the moment. And we did not have it ever in the past. That's why we couldn't... But do you think it needs to be changed? Or is there we, we, believe, we believe, you know, since we inherited it from the British, and it was there. You, you had it in this country till the last Labour government. Yes, but but one of let, me, let, me, let me answer you. We need to make it, you know, we have to... It has... We will not have to allow it to be abused. We have to take in such foolproof measures that it is not abused. 
laws are there, but laws should need not be abused. But the that difficulty is, is the uh, difficulty uh, is, and I'm pushing you to see if you will answer it, is that people are loath to speak out to say that it should be changed. No, it, 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 the, the very fact that it should not be abused is what I mean to say that it should be changed in that manner, that it is not abused, it's not allowed to be abused by individuals or groups who they make it, you know, exploit it to their ends. Do you this accept the point the being made is, by the... Sorry. Sorry, do, do come in there, Bishop. No, I was just going to say the, the, the question is not just one of abuse, but the nature of the law which prescribes a mandatory death sentence for blasphemy. Now, whether uh, law in this country or British law in, in India in the Raj, uh, the punishment was commensurate with the offence. I mean, this is one of the problems. I think in a country like Pakistan, you need uh, perhaps a law that prevents incitement to religious hatred that causes discrimination or uh, violence. Uh, but it's the kind of law we are talking about. That's the change that most people want. But Mr. Hassan uh, makes the, the point they couldn't get it through Parliament. Well, the High Commissioner's uh, Party, the Pakistan People's Party, has for a long time been committed to the abolition of the, or, uh, and or the suspension of the death penalty for all serious crime. Now, if they were to, to do this, and I know that other countries and the European Union want them to do this, this, this would actually solve, solve the one problem. of the most difficult problems. A final brief thought from you, Wajid Shamsul Hassan. Big pardon? Can I just have a final brief thought for you well, on that question of whether well, you could solve the problem by getting rid of the death penalty? Well, again, the death penalty, again, we have to, we, we are under pressure from the European Union. Will and we are reviewing it, and I'm sure in due course of time, and very soon, it will have to be, if you want uh, uh, to get concessions for the European Union, we'll have to amend the law regarding death penalty, Wajid. and so we'll be over with it. Wajid Shamsul Hassan and the Right Reverend Michael Nazir Ali, thank you very much.